Hi, I'm Tim Landwehr from Tightlines Fly Fishing Company, and today we're going to talk about the different insects or the different flies that there are to choose from. And if you walk into a shop and you look at a big, long uh, series of flies like this, it can be incredibly intimidating, especially from a trout fishing perspective. So what we're going to do is we're going to break it down simply for the beginner into two categories. Well, it'll be three, but two primary categories, flies that float and flies that don't. If we look at flies that float, what are we trying to do with a fly that floats? We're trying to imitate a natural insect like you see here that is designed to, to, to be the mature adult sitting on the surface of the water where a fish would come up and eat it off the surface. This would be an example of a fly that floats. Flies that don't float would be uh, the, nymphal, um, the nymphal stage of the insect like you see here or uh, you know what, what we're commonly referring to as a nymph. These would be flies that don't float. These live on the bottom of the river, and those are available to the trout 24-7. They're always, always there. Then the last category, which I don't have some examples of the, the, the naturals, would be different things that aren't insects that live in the water. Those would be different minnows, different bait fish patterns, like you can see here, or different leech patterns. But these are also considered flies that don't float, but would be um, you know, something that still lives in that trout's environment. So let's take a peek at some of the flies that float. And I've already selected some out of this big bin here. But we're going to take a look at flies that float. The top flies here are flies that float. These are what we we're referring to as dry flies. Now, a dry fly, I'll take one of these. This particular fly is called an Adams. And this is designed to look like that insect as a mature adult. Now, what will happen here is if I actually put this into the water, you can see it's going to float on the surface film just like this. And what we're hoping for is that a trout will come up and sip this off the top. Now these particular flies are made entirely out of natural materials, fur and feathers. So what happens after it starts to absorb a little bit of water? Say a trout eats it or um, you've just been fishing it for a long time. That fly that floats now becomes a fly that doesn't float. It's going to sink. Now the trout's not going to eat it at this particular moment. So what we're going to do ahead of time, before we even fish any of these flies that float, is we're going to do what we call dressing the fly. Before you begin fishing any of these flies, we're going to add a silicone-based floatant. And this is what we refer to as floatant. And what I'll do is I'll take that fly, that, that, uh, that floating fly, and I'll just apply a little bit of this floatant between my thumb and index finger and I'll rub that into, the, into my thumb and index finger and just heat that up. Then at this point what I'll do is I'll just rub that floatant on the hackle or this feather portion and on the tail of the fly and then I'll just put that on the water. Now that's going to make that fly float a lot higher. It's going to last a lot longer. You can fish this fly for hours without it actually sinking. And even if that fly gets a little bit damp and completely submerged, you can see that it's still floating on the surface. So that's the first thing that you do. Whenever you're fishing a dry fly, that's the first thing that you do. Now let's take a little look at the fly that's not floating anymore, the fly that's sinking on the bottom. If I grab that fly, would you think that, okay, this fly is useless. I can't use this for the rest of the day. Well, there's a trick. If you catch a couple of fish on a fly like this and it absorbs a lot of water, what we can do is we can use the second thing that I have that's called a desiccant or easy dry. What I'll do is I'll take that fly, I'll put it into this desiccant, and I'll shake that fly up. And what all of these little desiccant beads are doing is they're just roughing that fly back up, pulling all that moisture out, and it's going to allow that fly to float again. So at that particular point, I would just simply take the fly out, add that floatant back onto the fly and then put it back in and the fly is going to float again and it's ready to catch more fish. So those are, that's how we work flies that float. Now flies that don't float, the flies that are going to look like that nymphal stage uh, of an insect, um, that's what I have here. And you can see these. Now those flies that are going to sink, some of them might incorporate a little bead on the head for some added weight. We want these to get down to the bottom as quickly as possible. And you can see, bloop, right to the bottom. Now, at that stage, that's when that trout will take those. That is the nymphal form of that fly. That's when the trout's going to eat it. 
Now let's say we're fishing in very, very fast water and that fly is not getting down real quickly. I have a fly right here that I have a on, tied onto a piece of tippet material. Now even though this is made out of natural materials, a lot of times a nymph like this might hold a little bit of air or a little bit of oil that's left on our fingers and it might not sink right away. You can see this. This is supposed to be a fly that sinks, but it's not sinking quite quickly. If I get it wet, it'll start to sink and that'll, now it'll start going down. But if I'm fishing fast water and I want this fly to get down very, very quickly, I'm going to do something to it. The first thing I'll do is I'll reach into my vest and I always want to have a selection of split shots, smaller split shot to bigger sizes depending on how fast or how deep the water is that I'm fishing. And then what I'll do is I'll select one of those split shot and I'll put it on to the tippet material and I might put that five to six inches above the fly and at that point you can either use your teeth which I would not recommend or you can use a hemostats like I have here or small pliers and you can crimp that split shot closed just like that. So now we have the fly attached to the tippet material and that split shot. Now when I put that into that same tank at this point it's going to help get that fly down to the bottom very very quickly. That's very very important when you're fishing subsurface flies like this because you have to remember those nymphs are living in those riffles and in those skinny gravel spots and they're getting wa washed downstream. So that's how you want to prepare it. So again, to kind of re re regroup on what we just said, flies that float, we're going to want to dress them before we fish them with a silicone floatant. If after a while they begin to sink, we want to use the desiccant, shake them up a little bit, get them dried out, and reapply the floatant to it, and then go ahead and fish them. If I'm fishing a fly that doesn't float, like a nymph, I want that fly to get down deeply. I'm going to apply a split shot to it. That's going to help that fly break beneath the surface and get down to the level as soon as possible. And the same thing applies if, if we look at those minnow patterns that we showed earlier uh, or the leech patterns. If we're not getting these flies down deeply enough, it's not a bad idea to put a split shot above them to, uh, to get them down to that fish's level a little bit more. But I hope this kind of unravels the mystery of flies that float and flies that don't in a good place to start. And uh, I would recommend experiment with a lot of these different techniques. Learn them, get very, very comfortable with them, and then go out and actually apply them. And we'll see you on the river.